Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Abel, and today I will read a short story by Mary Robinson, yours, which originally published in the New Yorkers, 1982. So please sit back and enjoy. Yours by Mary Robinson. Allison struggles away from her white Renault, limping with the weight of the last of the pumpkins. She found Clark in the twilight on the twig and left littered porch behind the house. He wore a tan wool shawl. He was moving up and back in cushioned glider, pushed by the ball of his slippered foot. Allison lowered the big pumpkin and let it rest on the porch floor. Clark was much older than she, seventy-eight to Allison's thirty-five. They had been married for four months. They were both quite tall, with long hands. And their faces looked something alike. Allison wore a natural hair wig. It was a thick blonde hood around her face. She was dressed in bright dyed denims today. She wore durable clothes usually, for she volunteered afternoons at the children's daycare center. She put one of the smaller pumpkins on the clerk's long lap. Now, nothing surreal, she told him. Carve just a regular face. These are for kids. In the foyer, on the helpful white desk, Allison found the maid's chore list, with a cross of which included Clark's supper. Allison went quickly through the day's mail: a garish coupon packet, a flyer advertising white wines at Jamestown Liquors. November's pay TV program guide, and the worst thing, the funniest, an already opened, extremely unkind letter from Clark's married daughter up north. You're an old fool, Allison read, and you're being cruelly deceived. There was a gift check for twenty-five dollars, made out to Clark, and closed. His birthday had just passed. But it was uncashable. It was signed Jesus H. Christ. Late, late into this night, Allison and Clark gathered and carved the pumpkins together at an old table set out on the back porch. They worked over newspaper after soggy newspaper, using paring knives and spoons and a Swiss Army knife Clark liked for the exact shaping of his feet and eyes. And nostrils. Clark had been a doctor, an internist, but he was also a Sunday watercolor painter. His four pumpkins were expressive and artful. Their carved features were suited to the sizes and shapes of the pumpkins. Two looked ferocious and jagged. One registered surprise. The last was serene and beaming. Allison's four faces were less deftly drawn, with slits and areas of distortion. She had cut triangles for noses and eyes. The mouths she had made were all just wedges, two turned up and two turned down. By 1 a.m., they were finished. Clark, who had bent his long torso forward to work, moved over to the glider again and looked out sleepily at nothing. All the neighbors' lights were out across the ravine. For the season and time, the Virginia night was warm. Most of the leaves had fallen and blown away already, and the trees stood unbothered. The moon was round above them. Allison cleaned up the mess. Your jack-o'-lanterns are much, much better than mine, Clark said to her. Like hell, Allison said. Look at me," Clark said, and Allison did. She was holding a squishy bundle of newspapers. The papers reeked sweetly with the smell of pumpkin innards. "Yours are far better," he said. "You're wrong. You'll see when they're lit," Allison said. She went inside, came back with yellow vigil candles. It took her a while to get each candle settled into a pool of its own melted wax inside the jack-o'-lanterns. 
which were lined up in a row on the porch railing. Allison went along and relit each candle and fixed the pumpkin lids over the little flames. See, she said. They sat together a moment and looked at the orange faces. We're exhausted. It's good night time, Allison said. Don't blow out the candles. I'll put in new ones tomorrow. In her bedroom, a few weeks earlier in her life that had been predicted, she began to die. Don't look at me if my wig comes off, she told Clark. Please. Her pulse cores were fluttering under his fingers. She raised her knees and kicked away the comforter. She said something to Clark about the garage being locked. At the telephone, Clark had a clear view out back and on the porch. He wanted to get drunk with his wife once more. He wanted to tell her, from the greater perspective he had, that to own only a little talent like his was an awful, plaguing thing that being only a little special meant you expected too much most of the time and like yourself too little. He wanted to assure her that she had missed nothing. Clark was speaking into the phone now. He watched the jack-o'-lanterns. The jack-o'-lanterns watched him. Thank you so much for those who are listening until the video ends. And forgive me if I made a little mistakes here and there. I'm still learning, especially in English speaking and pronunciations. And before I close this video, and I would like to say thank you so much. I hope you really had a good day. Stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.